Hi guys and welcome back to the Super Data Science series on pattern recognition. We're going to be picking off where we last left off and that was really setting up, you know, importing our data, getting it shaped, and now we're ready to actually start initializing or building our k-means and our bench k-means. So what we're going to do, we're going to dive right into it. First things first, what we want to do is we want to actually define our k-means, which will be setting as follows. We want to pass in our estimator, name, and data. We need to now set time, k0 equals time, parentheses, estimator, pass in our data that we already have defined. And now we also need to set a print statement here. Let's see our data. I apologize because this print statement can get a little messy. So in order to speed that up, I'm actually just going to pause this for a second and add it in for you guys. All right, so we have our print statement added. What the takeaway here is, and one main thing to think about here is we're actually looking to pass in our some scores. One awesome thing about sklearn is that you can actually visit these scores and find out further information. For example, we're going to be passing in a homogeneity score. And I want to see, you know, what, what it's about. What does it, it, what does it exactly do with our clustering, with our k-means? And basically, it's, it's a metric of a cluster giving it a ground truth. And you can see here with the sklearn documentation, it's fantastic. Now, our clustering result satisfi satisfies homogeneity if all of its clusters contain only data points which are members of a single class. Now we're going to be visualizing this towards the end of our code, but we want to pass in these scores and these metrics that we can use to evaluate our k-means. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to be back jumping back in. It may be a little repetitive as you see, but it's a great way to get metric scores and you know it reduces the work that you need instead of having to build this um, in strictly with 100% um, with Python. We can use the sklearn and pass in these scores, um, these metrics with a simplistic approach. So we can see if we set our homogeneity score, we're going to pass in our labels, estimator, excuse me, estimator.labels, and we want to continue. We're going to do the same thing, but you can actually take this, you can actually take that. We actually want it on the same, I don't know how my... Uh, Spacing got a little messed up there. We don't want to use homogeneity this time since we already have it passed in. We want to use completeness. We're going to have the same thing labeled estimator labels. We're going to move on to the next, which again is returning. And we want to use a V, it's called a V measure score. So we're going to take our V measure underscore score. Same thing, labels, estimator labels. We also want to use the adjusted RAND score, adjusted mutual info, info score, and we will be adding one final one. So let me get those set up as well. We have homogeneity. We want to be using adjusted RAND. And we also want to be using adjusted mutual info. Adjusted mutual info score, underscore, don't forget the underscore. And again, I highly advise, take a look at sklearn, the documentation, if you're confused or if you want some additional information about these metrics, because it does, you know, such a solid job of explaining you, you know, really what we're, we're looking at. And it's a great way to evaluate our k-means to evaluate data. You know, the more you work with data, the more you're going to pass in these metrics to get an understanding of what is really going on with the data. And we also want to pass in one last one for now, but it's metrics.silhouette score. And we want to change um, a slight part of it. We want to pass in our data, our estimator labels, forget the underscore then estimator labels. And we're using um, a different metrics will be the Euclidean. And when we pass this in, we actually want to put Sit around that. And we want to add one last thing. We're going to be setting sample size equal to sample size. And to finish it off, we need, you know, don't forget, you have to close our parentheses. All right. So we have that. I just want to make sure that we have no errors. 
And we're good. We have our bench gamings, our main part of our gamings cluster, where we're looking at metrics past it. We're going to continue in the next one. We're going to actually be setting um, an initial initialization for our k-means. We actually want to use um, initialization as k-means. We're going to set a random, and we want to use uh, principal component analysis, which is a which if you look at print, uh, PCA, you'll see it defined as PCA. It's the main linear technique for dimensionality reduction. Basically, what it does, it performs a linear mapping of the data to a lower dimensional space in such a way that the variance of the data in the low dimensional representation is maximized. And you can take a look at that exact definition. Just look for dimensionality reduction PCA on Wikipedia. All right, so again, in the next video, we're gonna be diving into setting up the last two parts of our k-means cluster to get some metrics back and return some metrics. And after that, we are going to be working on setting up visualization so we can see where the data is clustered with Map with map outlet with PyPlot. So, thanks for joining me. Any questions, please let us know. As always, subscribe to the Super Data Science channel where you get up to date weekly information, some fantastic things going on in the industry, and I will see you in the next video.